Welcome to Pivotal Moments HQ. On this podcast, we share guidance and tips on how you can live an empowered life. Every choice you make is a pivotal moment and serves as a catalyst to living with intention, purpose, and meaning. It's never too late to start living your life and your right on time. I'm Celia Gutierrez, a mindset coach, attorney, and mental health advocate. I'm Melissa Robeda, a world leader in appreciative inquiry and strength-based leadership. This is Pivotal Moments HQ. Every now and then, a book comes along that you need to talk about and you need to make another person read and then have a conversation about it. That's what this episode is going to be today. So the book that we're going to be discussing is called It Didn't Start With You by Mark Wolin. And Melissa, you were the one who found this book and suggested it. Yeah. So I saw, you know, a video on TikTok and the, this woman was talking about generational trauma. And I know that we talk a lot about it that's, you know, here on the podcast and understanding that there are several reasons why, you know, we might continue trauma. It might be something we observe. It could actually even be something that happens even before we're born, you know, just the different biological things that happen within a pregnant mother and all that stuff. It was just fascinating. So I told Sidney, I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to put this book on hold at the library. I'm going to read it and I want you to read it too. Yeah. So that's, that's what happened. I know you thought I made Melissa read this. No, no, no. Melissa made me read it. Okay. That's, how, that's how this happened. And you know, the, the little subtitle. So I didn't, it didn't start with you, how inherited family trauma shapes who we are and how to end the cycle. Okay. So, you know, here I am thinking it's going to be mostly like science type things. So I think the way we're going to do this episode is first, we're going to talk about what we liked and then we're going to tell you everything else because <laughs> I feel like there's more for us to unpack, and we have not talked about this other than very brief, like, ooh, I want to tell you this, but no. Ooh, I want to tell you this, but no, because we wanted to save it for you, dear listener. I just finished it. I know. I just finished it. So I'm really glad that we are talking about this. So again, I kind of was like you. I thought that there was going to be more science-based. I thought we were going to talk a little bit more about the brain and you know neurotransmitters and stuff, and there was a little bit of that in the very beginning of the book. Yes. But then it got... Then it got real. Then it got raw. But let me just start off by saying what I liked about it. Um, I don't know. <laughs> if I'm being honest, I don't know. Um, it was a tough read. It, it was a tough read. But I'll say this. I, what I liked about it was indeed the fact that in the beginning portion of the book, before you really start diving down, there's a lot of um, interesting things that, I, that I've seen in other places, right? Like, so they talk about the mice studies that they've done on generational trauma with the mice smelling the Japanese cherry blossoms, right? So they'll traumatize basically the first generation. And by the third generation, they're scared when they smell it and they don't even know why, right? So it's like, that's something that they've been able to repeat over and over again. And I've seen that in, um, in other books as well. So it's like, okay, yeah, this tracks along how generational trauma can get passed down. And so, so I thought that that stuff was really interesting, but I think, as, as you continue down, then the book has um, all of these exercises for you to do. So it is very much a self-help book, but I almost feel like it was a lot of stuff to unpack by yourself. I, and that's part of the reason, I shouldn't say why I stopped, because I didn't stop reading the book. I stopped taking notes because they present a lot a, of reflective questions and exercises in the book. And, you know, I listen to audiobooks. So, you know, for me, I need to be able to see it. So I did download a PDF of all the questions and exercises so that I could reflect on them. But the questions were super deep and super reflective. And, you know, I feel that things come to you at a time that it's like meant to. And I, you know, I'm, I'm working on some of my mommy issues. And it's funny because this is season number two. Season one was all about daddy issues for City and I. Now we're focusing on the mother. Yep. And a lot of the exercises that he had just happened to be like, oh, like, let's just take, you know, uh, the relationship with your mother, for example. So I felt like it was almost like he was talking to me. Like it was almost like a therapy session. Uh, I felt like I was being attacked. And this is this episode's dropping in May. And May is Mother's Day month <laughs> and all of these things. Uh, so Perfect. I'm with you. I very much felt... Uh, yeah, attacked is the best way to put it. And I felt like the, I am one of those believers like you that when the 
the student is ready, the teacher appears. And I think the teacher can appear in all sorts of different ways and books being one of them. And But as I was reading this book, I was thinking like, you're almost too heavy handed in telling me that I need to like fix my relationship with my mother. Well, and that's that's the part that I have the biggest issue with because, you know, he's saying that you can end you know, um, these cycles or generational trauma by mending the relationship with your parents. And I'm thinking to myself, well, what if you don't? Like, why is it on the child's responsibility to heal this generational trauma gap, whatever it is that you want to call it? And then, you know, I think of my family where there is like really deep rooted and understandable, um, reasons why my siblings don't talk to my father and I'm thinking you know I felt like he was just really trying to push you know the fact that um it is you you need to fix it and it almost reminds me of my abuelita before she passed because my you know my father and I we were we were estranged for some time and I remember she would tell me you know forgive your father but I'm thinking to myself like why you're you are the adult why do I have to do it I don't know and I I hear you completely because I do feel like it was very heavy handed with that of just you have to do this. And, it, and I think where it came down to was for me anyways, was you have to do this for yourself, not necessarily for them, uh, which is something that we, we do come back to when we're doing therapy and, you know, all of these things, you know, the impact might be a better relationship with them, but really that that's not the goal it's for you to have your own healing and maybe not have these wounds that are festering or that are you know being um triggered by these individuals in your life right so it's like okay um i did enjoy some parts of the book in terms of um, seeing some of these studies some of the theories on there because i think a lot of it too are things that you can't necessarily study in a vacuum or that you can't Uh, replicate right so these are very interesting theories like the fact that you know if there was trauma in your family line that you may carry it and you may not even know that you're attached to it because nobody's talked about it well sometimes you're right there was like some where it was like their grandma or great grandma had experienced you know was a survivor of the holocaust and then this person you know several generations later wanted to unalive themselves by instant what was it incinerate they wanted to evaporate was it evaporate Mm -hmm. and he i almost felt like they were making narratives to where like or connections to where it wasn't there um i mean i felt that that relative was so far removed i mean not to say that there isn't remnants and that you know um her their parents and their parents parents didn't feel the effects of the you know the person that did survive the holocaust but I just, I felt like he was trying to make connections where there were none. I think that they were harder to back up. So for example, dear listeners, there was another story uh, that had to do with like one of Mussolini's generals. And so this first grandson, the first male heir in the, in this line, um, he's trying everything to kill himself and unalive himself. He is, uh, he signs up to, to go to war and he doesn't get his troop deployed. So he gets pissed off because he thought I'm going to die with honor. And it all had to do with him getting shot. It was very specific. So then this guy's like, okay, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to drive the wrong way on the highway and the police is going to shoot me down. I'm going to do all these things. And like he constantly, I think he did it about three or four different ways where he thought I'm going to try to unalive myself. And then what happens is that through this um, this doctor's tools and techniques is like, okay, what are the feelings here? What are you thinking about? And it's like, well, I don't deserve to live and I need to be shot somehow. And so, okay, well, who else in your family line has has this story? Because maybe it's not your story. And so then he connects that back to come to find out grandfather was one of Mussolini's, you know, henchmen and escaped before all of the other people were shot to death. And so there was, it was almost like he was paying like his grandfather's penance. Exactly. And so it's, it's, it's a really interesting theory. And I'm like, okay, this is interesting, but can, can you quantifiably say, yeah, this has happened. But I feel like there's so much that we don't know about the human brain and the psyche that Sure, why not? Well, I mean, um, I just came across another study for a different episode that we'll be recording, which is because the brain is so mysterious. We only know a fraction of, you know, the capacity, the potential of the brain that, you know, that's why we don't really, I mean, I shouldn't say that we don't study it too much, but it's just, it's very hard to prove 
things as fact when it comes to the brain, especially when it comes to psychology, because, you know, our wirings are so different, the neurotransmitters, all of that is uniquely or unique to us. And so I think it's very hard to replicate because I know science, you know, you have your hypothesis and then you experiment and then you try to replicate it to prove that your theory is correct. It's very hard to do that when it comes to the brain. Mm-hmm. Well, and with this generational trauma, right? Mm-hmm. Because that's really what you're talking about. And so I th- one of the other things I thought was interesting in the book was um, this this idea that basically you are developed or a part of you is developed in utero when your mom's being developed at like five months so i think what he was saying was when your grandmother was carrying your mother at about five months or so the fetus starts developing the eggs and as you know women will carry their eggs for the rest of their lives so a portion of you was created way back when it's like i know that part was pretty trippy it was like what yeah, no, yeah. I, I thought that part was interesting. There was one um, thing that I liked. I know we talk a lot about self-talk and narrative and like what are the stories we're telling ourselves. And in the book, he did break down what he calls like core language. So anytime that you're sharing a story, there might be common themes or words that you use um, to to share or tell your story and that there's actually meaning behind each of the words that you use. Um what was it? There was one. I thought I wrote it down. Oh, so um, like, for example, he had or one person was like, they always leave me. They leave me out of things versus I'm all alone. They leave me versus I'm all alone. And, you know, you might think, well, it's the same thing, but there is a difference. One is almost like um, playing the victim. And the other one is just like, I feel alone. What was interesting about this core language aspect of the book is that he then takes it another step further. It's like, okay, what is the core language that you use to describe your parents? And so that's when he starts kind of going down and it's like, listen, sir, you do not know me. I am not having this conversation with you about him. But the whole point of him having you say, you know, describe your parents and he walks you through these exercises of, you know, what were they like? Um, Did you feel loved by them? Like all of these different questions and the way that you respond about them is actually how you feel about yourself is what he's saying. And I'm not sure if I totally believe that because I um, have some very strong feelings about um, my mother at the moment. Uh, With my dad, I kind of feel like I've resolved a lot of things. Like you said, season one, daddy issues were good. (laughs) Season two, the second half has been this this whole thing of, um, you know, what do you think of your mother and how is that actually a projection of yourself? Yeah. And they, he was talking about four unconscious themes that can interfere with our ability to connect with our parents, such as like, you know, have we merged with a parent? Have we taken on their emotions and, and their feelings, especially if you're a parentified child like myself? I think that that, that was the one that I really resonated with. Uh, another one is you reject a parent. Uh, third was you experience a break from your mother like early in life. And the fourth one was uh, you identify with another person, another family member that isn't your parent. And he goes into depth about each one of those and how those can impact your relationship with your parents. But coming back to the exercises that you were talking about, Sadia, they, they, those were deep because he is trying to, I feel, shift any sort of anger or resentment or bitterness you have towards your parent to one of like sympathy and empathy. Because like there was one exercise that really stood out to me um, when they were, um, he asked you to like close your eyes and imagine again, he said mother. So I went with mother. Um, imagine your mother as a young child, like five or six, who was around her at the time? What was happening? Um, how did she respond? How would you have responded? And I just felt really sad. I mean, without going into do into too much uh, detail, like I just, I know my mom has been through a lot and it did have me shift the way that I looked at her in that moment and how my, I carry that, that empathy or maybe sympathy and trying to maybe repair this relationship that I don't really have with her. Mm-hmm. But I, I mean, it was intense. I, whew. yeah. And I, and I feel like that that's where for me, it was too heavy handed. It was like, do this, go ahead and look at that, look at and, and examine all these things. And a lot of times, um, uh, you do want to examine these things, but you might want to do it with a professional. Like that's kind of where mm. I felt like this book could be dangerous for people. If you're if you're doing this work and you don't have someone who can, 
the word hold hand is coming to mind. If you don't have someone who can walk beside you and talk about some of these things, do this, some of these exercises. Like, I don't know that, you know, I, I read very quickly, uh, especially with the audiobooks. So I, I got through it. I don't know that I would get through the exercises and go back and slowly do them. The main takeaway that I got from the book was, okay, I, got, I need to go work on this. I'm like, okay, universe, I hear you. I need to work on this relationship for my own well-being, not necessarily to please her. Um, and that's that's something that, okay, I'm good with. But doing it alone with just this book didn't feel like there was enough support I mean, I feel that I could because I am a reflector, but I, I've also been in therapy for several years and I feel, and I have you, and I feel like I have the tools to be able to go through that. But my God, the questions asked were incredibly deep. And, you know, I think we talked about about this before in a previous episode that, you know, when we're trying to heal and move forward, sometimes you have to go back and, and have to relive those negative, hurtful experiences. And so a lot of these questions could take you back there. So I agree with you. I think that you need some sort of support system, a professional, a very dear friend, a sibling. But like speaking of siblings, one of the things he did mention in the book as well was that he was talking about how siblings, you know, describe their parents and how different that could be. And it just seems like the eldest is just like the most bitter thing because they get a different parent than the younger ones do. And so what bothered me, and I know this is something that I'm personally struggling with, with the conversations I've had with siblings. I don't have any qualms with the siblings. I just differ, you know, because they'll say, you know, um, like I, I, what the story that you tell of mom is just not, you know, how I see her. But we, I also would say this to the sibling, like, well, we had different mothers growing up very mm -hmm. different mothers. And I just felt like he was trying to say, like, get on the same level as your younger siblings, you know, almost like, oh, that's interesting. Okay. And, um, and that, you know, the way that your younger sibling sees your, sees your mom is very different. Like, it, there's a reason why, like, it's because of you, like, you're holding on to this anger. And that's why, like, you describe your mom very differently than your younger sibling would. But it, like, to me, I'm like, well, that's because we had two very different parents. And so like, I didn't agree with him on that at all yeah and and i think that there's some things that were pointed out like for for example the attachment things that he's talking about in the book right so he, when he's talking about if there's a separation of some kind that even though this could be really dramatic for you you know think about the impact that it had on your parents like they came back and you didn't want to hug well you didn't want to hug because they left you and you didn't trust them and now their interpretation of that was oh well they don't want to hug because they're a little bit more independent and so then they don't hug you anymore kind mm -hmm. of a thing and you're just like yeah i get i guess like it, it, it would kind of make sense to me but you know he was saying like the separation could happen at any point i know for a fact that my coming into this world nearly killed my mother and she got a hospital-based infection and did not raise me for the first like two to three weeks of life my dad did and so i'm like huh well, that was definitely a separation. And then she had a separation from her boys mm -hmm. with that separation coming here to the United States. So it's like she has those issues. Um, how much of that is a reflection of how I'm feeling of not showing up and doing other things? Like that's kind of where I ended with this. Like I went through the book and I was thinking about it and it was just all on my mind. So I ended up doing um, a tapping session. And if you're not familiar with tapping, uh, our prior guest, uh, Nico Guillen, she's talked about it. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to do some tapping around this because I really felt like I'm not showing up in a lot of different ways. And so the book kind of got into my head of like, maybe you're not showing up because there's something to do with your mom. And it was like, you know what, she didn't show up for me. Like she didn't show up for me early in life because, well, she couldn't, right? She was in the hospital. Um, so maybe there's something there. But then in other parts of my life growing up, she hasn't shown up. And what am I doing right now in my own life? I'm not showing up the way I know that I can. And so it, I did this tapping session and I got pretty emotional in it, which can happen. And I just kept telling myself, it's like, I just need to show up. Because even though that's something that was not possible for her for a variety of reasons it's really not my issue anymore and just recognizing that that showing up somehow is related there I'll give that credit to the book but at the same time it's like 
I don't know that I want to do all of that work. And I think that that's part of it too. Giving that permission of just because you know there's an issue there doesn't mean you absolutely have to go ham and go handle all of it. Do it when you're ready. Well, and kind of dovetailing off of that, like I know that we repeat what we see, you know, especially, you know, in early childhood and everything like that. And, but I felt like this book helped me to really a pause because he was talking about like, we relive our parents' trauma and we continue the cycle. And what I mean by that is, you know, I, I did have a different parent than my younger siblings did. And and even um, Mark Wollen, the author of the book, will tell you that. My mother, I know that she wanted to love me different than her mom loved her. And I mentioned on the show that we didn't talk. We're not really big on hugging. I'm. If you can hear my voice right now, I'm still kind of nasally my mom lives in the same city as me and like has like not checked up on me. I think maybe she'll send me like a random text like you okay, you know, um, just not very maternal with me. And um, but that's even though she wanted to show me something different than what her mother showed her, she repeated exactly what happened. And so I felt like this book kind of through the exercises of picturing my mom at a younger age, knowing my grandmother and knowing their dynamic, it really did help me to look at my mom in a different light. And it, I feel like it has allowed me to maybe, again, like invite that, okay, now I'm ready. Now I'm ready to kind of like work on this with my mom. And I think that, that the exercises in this book did help with that. Yeah. It, it's interesting when you were talking, uh, when you said that I'm not maternal prior that was one of the questions that he asked right so there's a series of questions like have if you've ever felt like this you might have an issue with blah 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 and one of the things was like i'm not very maternal i don't want to have children i don't want to do these things and it's like oh so you're you are telling me sir that you think all of this is related to my relationship with my mother maybe 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 it's maybe it is maybe it isn't but you know who who are you sir so i mean overall i know like probably at the very beginning, it sounded like I didn't like the book. I think it gave me a lot of food for thought. I felt like I went through a gambit of emotions. Mm -hmm. um, I went from like angry, like, who the fuck do you think you are? I'm like, to, you know what? <laughs> I, you know, my mom did the best she could. <laughs> you know, to like, you know, I, I just, I went through every emotion I felt through this because there was a lot of thought provoking stuff in here. Yeah. And and I I questioned my belief of, am I the student that's really ready with this? So I think I was a lot of, okay, I hear you, but I don't want to do it. Like, because my angry teenager, like, I feel like my inner child is totally healed. And my inner child is like riding bikes and like getting ready to do all these things and like is super excited about eating cotton candy in Disney World. Like, my inner child is good. My inner teenager is fucking pissed. And she's pissed at my mom like that's that's what it comes down to so as I was reading this book I could feel the resistance of like I hear you but I don't want to <laughs> so knowing all this Cydia and having read the book uh, just recently as well like what would you recommend this book to individuals oh that's a tough one um, I think that I would say it's interesting and take it with a grain of salt and take it at your own pace because there are lots of exercises. I mean, every, basically after the first, I think it's like third or fourth um, of the book, that's when he starts getting into all these exercises of reflecting back on your parents and those relationships. He invites you to do a geneogram, which if you haven't done one of those, it's basically like a family tree about relationships. Um, and there's, there's a lot of work to be done in these books. And there's a whole series of self-help books out there that really walk you through things, I think, in a gentler way than this one. But this one is, um, you know, and that this could be a little bit of projecting on my part, but it's an intense read. So unless you have already done some work, this would not be the first one I would recommend. I would have to agree with you. I would have to agree with you. I mean, he does tell you to, you know, pause the book to be able to do the exercises, but it... It, I, th I think, you know, if I were to have knowing that, because I think, you know, when you have a disconnect with your parent, like you just know, like you're angry, you're hurt, whatever it is. So, you know, that you have, you know, strife with your parents, you have beef with your parents. And I think if you were to pick up this book, I didn't know that that's what the book was about. 
And I think that that also caught me off guard too. Agreed. Um, I literally thought we were going to be exploring generational trauma, not like this book is going to be, you know, you're going to heal or you're going to feel like a piece of shit after you're done reading this or you're going to need to do more work. I mean, I, I guess there were some good things that came out of it, but I just was not prepared. And I think that that also was the reason why it was just such a difficult read for me. Agreed. I think that it was uh, should come with a better warning label of mm. what you're doing. It is more of an advanced read. Um, I did think it was going to be, oh, great, let's have more science behind the generational traumas. But again, it's still something so new that I'm willing to give them, I, I don't want to say a pass, but I'm willing to give them some space on it because it is something that, yeah, okay, we, we're three, four generations out now from the Holocaust. We have a group of people that we can study. That's one group. Now we have things where even the words generational trauma are now in the uh, everyday lexicon and vocabulary of people, right? These weren't things that you were talking about 10 years ago. You weren't talking about, not even five years ago, I don't think people were talking about, let's talk about generational trauma. It's like, no, okay, it's something more um, prevalent right now, but it's still something that's, because it's so new, um, or at least coming to the forefront, that there's a lot that we don't know. And so I think a lot of the studies that he was talking about, people feeling like the ghost of their lost uncle, and yes, there's a story in there about an uncle ghost thing. Um, I don't know that I can say, oh yeah, everything in the book is true. It might be true to those people, absolutely, but does that mean that we can extrapolate from their experience what it's going to be like for everybody else? I don't think we're there. Yeah, that, that, that was a... Mm. That, that was something. That was, that was something. So if you learned anything today, folks, it's to watch out for the books Melissa recommends. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, my the books that I normally recommend are good. See, the thing is I they hadn't are. read it before recommending it. Um, I just, again, like I, I was just under a way different assumption of what the book would be. Um, agree with Cydia. I would not. This is definitely an advanced read um, for those that are on this healing journey. Um not a light read at all no not at all but you know what it is we learned something and it's very rare that melissa and i actually come off of a book at about the same time um usually it'll be like oh yeah no i read that like six months ago and you know we go back and forth so i thought this would be an interesting or we thought this would be an interesting conversation for you guys and we certainly hope that it was so you know interesting read not a place to start if you are working on your healing journey with um, especially with your parents um, but you know something to, to add to the we'll read in the future list maybe that's it for this episode find pivotal moments hq on instagram and tiktok for all the bts and sister-like banter you know and love we want to thank our music director ron johnson this has been a pug productions podcast 